I watched it back the day after and I was feeling pretty sorry for myself. And I watched it back trying to find faults and I just couldn't because it was actually so impressive. Like I'm so proud of myself, the team. Like, I'm not going to lie, when we were sitting in the green room, we were so excited because we thought there was a really good chance of us um, getting through to the final. Um, just didn't work out that way. I don't really know what Ireland needs to send in the future <laughs> in order to get into the grand final because it's like a bit like finding the golden ticket for Charlie <laughs> and John. Back yeah. Then. No, you absolutely smashed it. You did yourself proud. You did everyone watching in Ireland proud. You were absolutely brilliant. You left absolutely nothing left on the, on the stage that night. The reaction on social media, on Twitter, was crazy. Uh, you've been called Derry Lipa, obviously, after Dua Lipa. Ollie Alexander, massive name, tweeting about you. Nadine Coyle was out supporting you. Um, hashtag robbed was trending on Twitter. I, I can understand. Absolutely, in the wake of you not making it through <laughs> to the final. Did that reaction help you in a way when you... I mean, you were entitled to throw yourself a pity party, so did that reaction help you, that people were outraged that you didn't make it through to the final? Do you know what? I actually never threw myself any pity party. Like, I, I, would got, I was sad. Sorry, that's a lie. I did cry for about 20 minutes, but, I, <laughs> but it, it did get easier once I seen all the love that was coming through. Like, the song went down a storm. Um, Ollie Alexander, that was crazy. And then Nadine Coy, like, the dairy icon herself, was, <laughs> was getting touched. And before I came on the show, actually, Dana called me again. Like, people are still so annoyed, and that's nearly a better reaction than if I'd got to the grand final and done really badly in the leaderboard. So, do you, mm. never, you never know. These things always happen for a reason. Okay. Like, like we were thinking, like Justin Timberlake popped up in Eurovision a few years ago as the, you know, as the, the entertainment while they were getting all the votes together. And I was just thinking, why wouldn't artists like that jump on stage? Because there are hundreds of millions of people mm. watching Eurovision. Like, was that in your head? Were you not bricking it when you went on stage knowing <laughs> you're going in, such of a, in front of such a big television audience? Do you know what? I, I wasn't nervous at all because I knew I'd done the work. So regardless, I knew the performance was going to be good. And I think a lot of big stars actually do dodge the Eurovision because of the level. Like, it is, it's unpredictable to a degree. Like, um, there's songs in it that just blew up. Like, you've seen yourself, like, the, there was wolves. <laughs> like, there was a girl washing her hands. Like, <laughs> and people live for that. Like, they love that. Eurovision is it's the biggest show on the, in the world, but it's also the hardest competition in the world. Like, like is, is the schedule intense and gruelling in the lead up to the show? I'm uh, like, I handled it actually quite well, but it was so much pressure. Like, a few days before the live show, you do a turquoise carpet, which is like one kilometre long, and there's hundreds and hundreds of journalists that you stop and talk to. And talking is actually a lot harder than singing, believe it or not. And, um, like, I, I, did, I just left after. They threw a big party, but I was like, there's no way I'd be able to sing on the Sunday if I... Or what day was it? I it wasn't it. I don't know what day. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, I, I didn't get to the final match, guys. Well, Jen, like, you was, have to mind your was, voice. Because you're, you're talking so yeah, much to really the media do. and fans that you have to watch your voice for the actual performance. Mm-hmm. Because it's a, sing, a singing competition. And, like, the only people that really watch that stuff is Euro fans. So... Like, I know that in, in the past, I've turned the TV on and I've watched the Eurovision just like at, um, just point blank, see who I love and who I don't love. So nothing exists until the night. Wow. Well, it's not all hard work because we did see you have a little bit of crack in Turin. Uh, let's take a look at you entertaining some Irish fans in the Irish bar. <laughs> Irish fans are the best. That looked like so much fun. But that was an Irish pub, but a lot of them weren't Irish. Like, actually, I'm bigger in Spain than I am in Ireland. <laughs> like, I, I know I'm joking. Like, there was, like, hundreds and hundreds. I had to wait for, like, an hour and a half and just stand and, and talk. There was a queue of people looking photos, and it was mental. Like, really, I cried a lot at that point, yeah. It was, like, do you know what happened? My mummy was on an airplane, and she met this, like, fan club, and... She got added into the group chat, so she's like, Brooke, you have to go to the Huntsman. All the fans were there waiting for you. So I was like, right, OK. And then it was mental. The reaction was mental. Brilliant. Well, like Brilliant you say, you, you step into a different realm when, when you get involved in Eurovision. And um, 
to the point where one of the benefits is that mm. you don't actually need your passport anymore <laughs> when you're travelling through airports. Isn't that right, Brooke? Oh, it helps. It helps. <laughs> it helps a lot. What happened? <laughs> right, so I lost my passport in Barcelona. And at the time, I didn't really mind because I knew that Eurovision was massive in Spain. But when I got to the airport and like I remember I stepped off the plane and was like, okay, I forgot my passport. They put me in jail. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what is happening? Like I I am here for the Eurovision. And they weren't listening. So then I goes, right, give me your phone, please. And then I took his phone and I put myself into YouTube. And I was like, Chanel is like the second biggest star in Spain. So I was like, I'm the Irish Chanel. Like here, <laughs> like it's me. And he watched it, but the face didn't change. But um, he let me through anyway. And I just had to like get a form and stuff. But it was very, it was very eventful that whole time. Like that went, that was mental.